WTOP. We haven't ruled out or ruled in anything. We're waiting for the test results. We go straight to downtown Washington, the scene of Bonet. A note said the anonymous package contained deadly bacteria, anthrax. Toxic material teams were called out. People who handled the package were decontaminated and rushed to hospitals. This is what they were worried about. Saddam Hussein spent as much as $100 million developing Iraq's biological weapons. By the time Iraq invaded Kuwait, Hussein had cultures of anthrax and enough poison from the bacterium that causes botulism to kill every person on the planet. During the Persian Gulf War, part of the supply had been deployed in missiles, and Iraqi commanders had authorization to fire. Then the war was over. The United Nations destroyed the facilities where the toxin was made. Even without the germs of war, people are spooked by the diseases caused by bacteria. Pneumonia, salmonella, meningitis, all caused by bacteria and passed among us every day. Infectious diseases is the greatest cause of illness and death in human history. It is now the third highest cause of death in the United States. Bacteria can make us deathly sick and often kill us. And just when we develop medicines to kill the germs, they do what they do best, mutate to resist our medicines. Supermarket shoppers are bombarded with products to kill germs. In the past three years, the number of new antibacterial products has tripled. I've become more concerned about getting sick from the salmonella. Kills germs that cause food-borne illnesses. Germs, um, you know, I have a six-month-old baby, and so that's a major concern for me. That's what I worry about mostly is the germs and all the things I talk about in the kitchen. How about dreaming up something about soap and water for Homer for tomorrow morning? Water, and for decades, eh? the evils of bacteria have been drummed into our heads. How about... Oh, you smell sweet. Yes, sweeter than you used to be. Sweeter than you used to be. Sweeter than you used to be. You'll be neat. Yes, neater than you used to be when you get rid of the old. It's not sissy to be clean. Who said that? Who's there? Let me introduce myself. Soapy's the name, partner. Why... You're a living cake of soap. Big as life, Billy. We are destined to always live with microorganisms, and the concept that we will eradicate microorganisms, you can wash to your heart's content, but you won't rid your skin of microorganisms. Uh, and you can scrub to your heart's content, and you won't rid, rid your mouth of bacteria. And there are other things that we know about that bacteria are, are, are constantly present. Our intestinal tract is one great fermentation tube and uh, it's constantly gurgling and grinding and converting things. We, we absolutely depend on these things, and there's no way out of it. Actually, less than 1% of all bacteria cause disease. The others perform countless useful functions in everyday lives. Bacteria are behind many of our favorite foods, and when those foods spill down the front of us, bacterial enzymes help get the stains out. Even man-made snow relies on bacteria. Protein from freeze-dried bacteria helps flakes to form out of water mist. Bacteria are the oldest life form on Earth. They survive, even thrive, in some of the harshest environments. In the hot springs of Yellowstone, in pools of acid, in caves and crevices in the Earth without light or air next to ocean vents where the water temperature is 480 degrees. Bacteria have more surprises than any organisms because they're so diverse. They have so many different functions. They carry out all of the major functions in the world. They supply us with our nitrogen. They supply most of the carbon to the biosphere. They cycle nutrients. They, they produce antibiotics. They keep us healthy. They make us sick. They basically control every major function in biology, and they probably do all sorts of things that we don't know about yet because we haven't discovered them all. This is what a bacterium is, a single-cell organism with its own branch on the tree of life. 
daisies, squirrels, and people on this side because their bodies are made up of many cells. It's the smallest of free-living organisms. About a million would fit on the head of a pin. Viruses are a hundred times smaller, but they have to move into a host cell to survive. Bacteria come in a variety of shapes and sizes, and to reproduce, they simply divide. In many species, cell division occurs every 20 minutes. Bacteria have studied us more closely and more lovingly than any other creature. Uh, even your dog can't give you the devotion that your bacteria do. They've uh, explored and, and uh, understood and, and uh, taken advantage of every nook and cranny of the body to which they can gain access. We are born bacteria-free, but within hours we begin to be colonized with about 400 species of microbes on our skin, in our intestines, in our mouths, noses, and throats. There are more bacteria in our mouths than living people on the planet, more bacteria in our bodies than human cells. Billions are helping to digest our last meal. Those bacteria, E. coli, turn our food into sugars and process vitamins. They also keep us healthy by occupying spaces that otherwise might be occupied by disease-causing bacteria. But even good bacteria like E. coli can develop deadly strains. Bacteria are good or bad, and sometimes they are both. Remember Saddam Hussein's biological arsenal? He raised bacteria with the graceful name of Clostridia botulina. It causes botulism, a kind of food poisoning we got to know too well before processing methods were improved. When we eat it, we get deathly ill and we die. It's, a very, it's about as, as potent a poison as, as is known, actually. Pound for pound, it, it will kill more things than anything else. Six million times more deadly than rattlesnake venom, it is the most toxic substance on Earth. Botulinum toxin could be such a powerful weapon that it's been drafted for war since the 40s. Watch your flame this here. Scientists suspected there might be a use for the toxin. Ed Schantz began his study of the toxin while working for Army Intelligence during World War II. Until his retirement, he supplied all the botulinum toxin used in scientific and medical research in the nation. Eric Johnson has worked with him for the past 13 years. We purify it by several purification steps, and there's, I would say, 50 milligrams of toxin in this vial here, which is maybe a million lethal doses, so obviously we're very careful with how we handle it. You want a sample? After all his years of research, Dr. Schantz had the imagination to see another application for the toxin. 